Hello, the purpose of this Anytime Anywhere workshop is to show faculty how to add images to either their test questions or their test answers so that students can identify certain visual or maybe even audio content. Now here I am in a typical Blackboard course on the control panel and I'm going to begin by going to the test manager. Now you can either add a brand new test or you can modify a test that already exists. Let's start by adding a new test. I'm going to give the test a name. And click Submit. All we're doing here is giving it a name. Now the most important part of this is the creation settings because in the creation settings is where you let Blackboard know whether or not you're going to be using either attached images or embedded images in test questions or test answers. So I'm going to click on creation settings and I want you to look at part two, images, files, and external links. If you do not have checks in these two boxes, then you will not be able to add images or other links to your questions and answers. So make sure that you've done that. Another thing that you want to be sure to do is to specify the default point question value or it will automatically make them 10. And if you have a 50 point quest 50 question test, you're going to have a 500 point test and the only way to fix that is either to make it again or to edit every one of the questions, which I don't think you're going to want to do. So it's a good idea to come in here and set your default point value anyway and make sure that you tell it whether you want to use images in either your questions and or your answers. So we'll click Submit and it's going to let us know what we have selected, yes or no, and then we click OK. So now that we've taken care of the creation settings, now we can add our questions and attach our images. So let's just do a typical multiple choice question and then we'll click go. And you can put your question text here. And you can browse and attach a file and the key is this action menu here because it defaults to create a link. So when you browse and attach the file, it will add it as a link unless you move this down to display image within the page. That's what embeds the image. Okay, so I'm going to browse and I'm going to go to some place on my desktop and some place on my computers and So now I've got an image that I want to use and I'm going to select it and click the open button. Alrighty, so I'm going to display it within the page. And I am going to allow partial credit. See, now that it refreshes the screen, it's got the image. And all I have to do now is to type in my answers. All right, now I've added my four answers, my four possible ones. And for the correct one, I have made sure that the spot indicates that it is the correct answer. So now I'm going to scroll down and click Submit. And you'll notice here that the image has been displayed in the question text to go along with the question. And then the student, of course, wouldn't see the correct answer. They would see which four to pick and they would have to select the one that is correct. So that would be how you could embed images in the question. So now let's make another multiple choice question and let's embed the images in the answers. Okay, so now I'm going to browse and I'm going to find the file that I want to use and open it. 
And remember the key is to drop this action menu down to display image within the page. That's another way of saying embed the file. Okay, so now I'm going to allow partial, um, excuse me, I'm going to allow answers to be in random order. And now I'm going to add my answers. So in this case, I want to add images. So I come down to the Browse and I select which one I want to use. And then I come, and that's the one I'm going to mark as being correct. And I also have to use the display image within page. I have to drop that down. And now I'm going to go through and do the same thing with the other um, possible answers. And these, of course, will not be correct. So I'm going to add a couple of bogus ones and make sure that they're embedded as well. Notice that I am not marking these as being correct. I'm getting the point where I'm adding nonsense pictures because I think you get my point here as to which as to what I'm actually doing. And I'm displaying each one of them. In fact, I'm going to go back and check that each one of the action buttons say display image within the page. That way the pictures will be visible for each of the answers and there is only text in the question. Okay, so now all of that's great and I'm ready to select uh, submit. All right. So you see I've got images and they have to select which one is correct. Now it looks to me like I've added one in the actual question, so I'm going to modify that and remove it because I don't want it in the question. That kind of gives it away. So I can remove an image as well. I just did. And I'm clicking Submit. And so now we have the text and then we have images. All right, now you can see that this image is rather large. So I'm going to modify again to show you that you actually do have control over the image size. So what I'm going to have to do is remove this image because it's too large. And then I will just browse to another image that I know that I have that's a little bit smaller. And add and make sure that one displays within the page. So I'm going to submit and keep that change. And we'll take a look and you see that's much smaller. So now the student would have to select which image is the correct answer, whereas on this one the image is embedded in the question and then the student selected textual answer. So that's how you would add images to either test questions as this one is, or as number two is, you would add them to the answers.